quitting has prompted a cabinet shuffle. There's a vacancy at the Treasury Board, which now needs to be filled. So the Liberals are changing square dance partners, so to speak. And this is Trudeau we're talking about. So, you know, don't expect him to put anybody who can actually do the job of their portfolio into a portfolio. That's not how things work. Somehow a lot of these shuffles almost always have a bit of an upside and then a big downside. An upside because a failing minister is suddenly shuffled out of their portfolio and a downside because they're usually shuffled into a new one where they can continue to be as out of their depth as they always were. Now let's take a look at a few of the shuffled cabinet members. First off, Jane Philpott is being shuffled out of Indigenous services and that's very good. She's moving over to fill in as the president of the Treasury Board, and that is very bad. Now look, I'm very glad she's out at Indigenous Services because she barely moved the needle on very basic things like clean drinking water for First Nations on reserve. And she made herself famous in Ottawa by spending $110,000 in legal fees fighting a First Nations girl over $6,000 in dental work. Now maybe, just maybe, some of that misplaced fiscal conservatism would better serve Philpot over at the Treasury Board, which is basically the secretive panel that oversees government management, but I highly doubt it, and here's why. Philpot only pinches pennies when it comes to Canadians, but she doesn't pinch them for herself. She spares no expense on herself. Who could forget how she tried to pass off a $3,700 limo expense, which was especially sleazy given that the limo company was owned by a Liberal Party supporter. But that wasn't her one and only time she tried to take advantage of her expense account. Philpott also tried to charge the cost of a suitcase and her Nexus card to the taxpayer, and she almost got away with it until an internal audit flagged her $381 in nickel and diming Canadians. Philpott's definitely not the person you want overseeing government spending, if you ask me. Philpott leaving Indigenous services means now there's a vacancy over there. Seamus O'Regan is being shuffled out of Veterans Affairs, which is good, but he's ending up at Indigenous services which is absolutely horrible. Seamus O'Regan is most notable for being a talking head on TV and Trudeau's groomsman in his life before politics, which of course made him utterly unprepared for his role at Veterans Affairs and his performance. It showed as much. Just a couple of months ago, O'Regan told a room full of veterans that he understood what they were going through, the pain and the confusion that soldiers can feel when adjusting to civilian life because he once had been a TV journalist who then transitioned into government and he experienced what he thought was a similar shock to his system. Yes, yes, Canada AM was just like Fallujah. Thanks, Seamus. Under O'Regan, it was uncovered that Veterans Affairs paid for the PTSD treatment of a convicted murderer who killed an off-duty police officer and stuffed her body in a garbage can under a bridge because the murderer had a father who was a veteran. The murderer had never been a veteran himself. Oh, and the PTSD treatment the murderer was receiving? Well, that's the PTSD he gave himself when he was killing the police officer. O'Regan spent much of his mandate at Veterans Affairs fighting veterans in court over their pensions, wasting their resources on non-veteran convicted murderers, and not understanding veterans' issues whatsoever. And now he's moved on to mangle the ministry meant to aid another underserved, vulnerable group. What have Indigenous people ever done to Justin Trudeau to deserve someone like O'Regan. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a video monologue and then I interview an interesting guest and then I end by reading my hate mail, but you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.